I would say Streetlights is more of a story than a message. It's a really personal song. It's about what I was going through the last couple months and just about taking time to be by yourself and clear your head. So basically I was going through a lot after graduation, just trying to figure out what I wanted to do next and what was the right track for me. And with Street Lights, it was just like driving and being in the car was my time to really think and be alone and have like air to breathe. I felt suffocated by all the questions from people like, what's next, where are you going, what are you doing? So being in the car and driving and clearing my mind is kind of the message of Street Lights, taking time to be by yourself and think things through. I'd say in, in the second verse of the song, it says, I'm not always the best to myself. I suck at dealing with my mental health. I think I can do everything on my own, like these late night drives alone. And when I wrote that, it was actually in a freestyle when I first heard the beat. And I jokingly put it in there, but I was actually going through it. And I was thinking about taking it out just because it was kind of personal. I didn't want people to know like I was dealing with mental health issues, but then my friends were like, no, keep it in there because that's what people need to hear because other people are going through that too, especially with seasonal depression coming up and seasons changing. So that's kind of the message of the song. I would say the biggest takeaway from the song is finding time to get back grounded and finding time to recharge yourself. So I was doing a lot last year in these last couple months, like in the community as far as activism and working with people balancing school, nonprofit work, public speaking, mentoring, and not really ever taking time to recharge or sleep or take care of myself and figure out what I want to do. So I'd say the message of the song and what I want people to take away is it's okay to take time for yourself and whatever aspect that looks like, whether it's taking a long way home and driving or it's traveling or it's painting or it's creating music or doing doing whatever you enjoy, not being scared to be selfish on time to pour into yourself. I would say when I heard the beat, I automatically came up with the melody of just kind of like stopping, like street lights, stop signs, just to kind of let it hit so you could really hear every single word and every single line and message. And as I was writing the song, it just kind of flowed. And I think I wrote it probably in five or 10 minutes because once I started, it was just really personal and something I wanted to finish and I really didn't want to release it at first because it was such a personal song and most people don't know how I feel or what I'm going through. I keep it to myself so I just put it in my music. So writing it, it was just it just kind of flowed like as I started it just kept going. So I would say it happened with the creative process. I wanted it to be kind of hopeful, you know. When I first started writing it and I was talking to someone the other day about it, it's hard to write a song or finish a song if you haven't gotten through something. So I think that's part of the reason why it took us so long to release a song as well is because I was still getting through it. So it's like as I'm writing it and as I'm finishing the entirety of the song, I'm still trying to get through what I'm going through. And now it's like, okay, it's finished and I've gotten past that and now I can help other people get past that as well. Street Lights and Unfolding both is more on the acoustic side, some drums and messages about like my personal life and broad things that I go through where as the EP is going to be more um, I'd say intricate and detailed when it comes to my love life and different genres exploring um, alternative sounds, straight acoustic sounds, more Latin vibes, um, all different types of genres so I'm looking forward to showing um, my creative side and uh, my crossovers um, in different types of genres. All right, last and final question. How much is it for a Taylor Hall feature? <laughs> right now, I'm just trying to find my sound. So I'd say I've been not wanting to do features at this moment just because I'm trying to explore different sounds and explore um, different things as an artist. I've only been a recording artist for a year. I've been doing music and writing my whole life, but I've only been a recording artist for a year. So it's coming, but right now I'm just trying to really find my sound, find what kind of market I want to be in before I start doing features because I don't want to get lost in someone else's sound or go into the studio and not really have my set, you know. So a Taylor Hall feature is priceless is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, but when I, when I have my first one, just know it's gonna be, I can't say too much right now, but you'll see in the next year.
I've been I've been in the works. Let's see.